Hello friends, my name is Marines. Last year I had the idea to put together a video featuring many different people's favorite and least favorite reads for the year. I know that people often do this on their personal channels, but I thought it would be interesting and entertaining to see a bunch of picks in each category in one shot. Hey everyone, my name is Joss. You may know me from my booktube channel, Scoobles Reads. My least favorite book of 2016 was definitely Shatter Me by Tatra Mafi. Let me preface this review by just saying that I really, really enjoy indulgent description. Like, I don't need a book to be very plot focused or move very fast and I really appreciate slower books that take time to describe little things. But these descriptions in Shatter Me, let me tell you, are in a league of their own and I do not mean that in a good way. To start off, this book is set in a dystopian society which we really only know about very vaguely because the narrator is way too busy giving us metaphors about rain and puddles and ponds and buckets of water and oceans and waves to describe this one dude's very blue eyes over and over and over over again. What made me really mad was that as a dessert lover, this book almost, and I mean almost, turned me off of eating any more desserts, including, number one, crepes. Because of the quote, my stomach is a flimsy crepe. Like, crepes are already pretty flimsy, but this just kind of gives me the image of your stomach lining bursting and out comes some whipped cream and strawberries. And number two, I really didn't want to eat anything that involved vanilla or vanilla scents for a long time because of this quote that I may literally never forget for the rest of my life. And the quote is, Warner thinks Adam is a cardboard cutout of vanilla regurgitations. Thankfully, Dessert and I are in a fully committed relationship and I'm very happy to say that I did not let Shatter Me get between us. Hello! So my name is Karen. My least favorite book had some steep competition. I'm not gonna lie, this is a little bit unfortunate, but in the end I decided to go with Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi. I just couldn't find any redeeming qualities to this book. The writing was incredibly melodramatic and just wildly nonsensical at times. I felt like every single character was kind of just a stock character, cardboard cutout, completely one-dimensional. The world building consisted of about 50 really cliche YA dystopian tropes all smashed together and I just was not into this weird insta-love that turned into PG erotica. Yep, that was Shatter Me. Hi, I'm Caitlin, and normally you might find me on my channel Book Chats, or more likely wandering around Twitter under my full name, Caitlin Vanoss. So the absolute worst book that I read in 2016 is actually a book that I didn't even finish. I put it down, and the next day the thought of picking it back up again just made me feel ill, and so I decided not to and I spared myself finishing that book. But I've read a lot of commentary on it, I could clearly tell where the author was going with it, and I've read a lot of reviews written by people who were being poorly represented in this book. And so I could tell where Jojo Moyes was taking me and I did not want to go down that road. Me Before You is not the worst written book that I read in 2016, that, but that just makes it more harmful. It is a deeply flawed, emotionally manipulative, ableist book that doesn't respect its quadriplegic hero character enough to get him the treatment for his depression that he so clearly needs, or to treat him like a human being pretty much at all. And there are so many things wrong with the book on so many levels, but if you read it and you liked it, that's fine. But you should also read a review of it written by someone who is actually part of the community that it purports to represent. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and I am from the channel Sarah Ann Reads. My least favorite book of the year was Me Before You by Jojo Moyes, and I was a little bit late to the party with this particular one. I didn't read it until well after the movie came out because of the fact that the movie came out, and so everyone wanted to borrow it from the library, and it took a good bit to get it, but I am really glad that I waited until I was able to get it from the library because I could not stand most of this book. The writing itself was not bad. It wasn't awesome. It wasn't amazing. It was just kind of average. The pacing of the story was sort of similar. Not amazing, not terrible. Like it didn't drag so much that I wanted to chuck it across the room or anything. But when it came to pretty much everything else, the characters, the plot, and the themes that come out of the story, I just so many issues. I did not find any of the characters to be likable in the slightest. Then when it came to the the plot itself and how 
Lou's story interacts with Wills and just the whole arc of everything and the end. I just, I had so, so many issues. And that brings me to the themes. And that's when you know the ending of the story, which I'm not going to spoil it for you if you have somehow not been spoiled. But the potential themes that could have come out of this story are many. Like, Jojo Moyes could have so many different options for messages that she wanted to get across when she was writing this story, and basically none of them are positive. They are all problematic in some way, and many of them are incredibly disrespectful to anyone with some kind of physical disability. I had so, so many issues with the way that his disability played into Lou's character development and how he was effectively used as a piece of de character development for Lou. It didn't really seem like he was supposed to be a character who was a character in his own right. He was simply there for the purpose of m making Lou's character become a different person and I just was not a fan of that. Don't waste your time. Really not worth the read. Hello, my name is Karina and my YouTube channel is The Woodley Sun, though I'm not a booktuber, so if that's what you're looking for, I'm sorry. My worst read of 2016 is actually, uh, well, it's a two for one, even though Mari said I should pick one, but I can't really pick one because they are all connected, so it's Me Before You by Jojo Moyes, it's Everything Everything by um, Nicola Yoon, and also it's All the Bright Places by Jennifer Neven. And they are all, to me, the worst that I've read in 2016 because they are such terrible representation. I mean, they feature disabled people, some of them mentally, other physically disabled, and it's just, it's a terrible representation. It's not done in a good way. Like with Me Before You, the disabled person only is there to advance the plot of the not disabled person and that's just very sucky and everything, everything is just, I don't know, I guess the big plot twist pretty much in the beginning and that made it possibly even worse for me to finish the book because it's just so wrong what happened and also I think it's just a cop-out. It's too easy. Hi everyone, my name is Sajid from the channel Books Are My Social Life. My least favorite book of the year was Mosquito Land by David Arnold. So to put it into perspective, you know when you're writing an essay for school and you start to realize that it's lacking a lot of substance, so you try to compensate for that with flowery language and complex word structures, um, that's basically Arnold's writing style. But what ticked me off the most about this book was the fact that a character with a mental disability was literally dehumanized and used as comic relief, which was not okay. Hola, hola guys, my name is Roxanne from the YouTube channel The Novel Sanctuary, also the Instagram The Novel Sanctuary. So my least favorite book was A Fierce and Subtle Poison by Samantha Mabry. This book had so much potential and I was so excited about it, but then it chooses a very boring, bland white boy to tell a story about the tales and the cuentos and the myths told by the grandmas in the island of Puerto Rico, where I was born. So immediately I had issues with it. The father of the main character is a racist, sexist bastard that never really gets any consequences except for the fact that the main character thinks, oh, I wish my dad wasn't so sexist and so racist, but never does anything about it, doesn't say anything about it. The female characters, which are the most interesting characters, are never really explored or fleshed out. The mystery behind it was really what kept me glued because I wanted to see what, what was going to happen and the magical realism um, was interesting but really at the end they ended up falling flat for me and it just it really gives a very touristy feel of what Puerto Rico is life it is like it doesn't actually go into the depths of the island and the complexity of the people and really I just it didn't like it it started at a three star went down to a 2.5 and then at a one star do not recommend it. Hello booktube! This is Becky from Becky Writes and this is Becky Reads. My least favorite book of the year was No Land's Man by Asif Monby. This was supposed to be like a comedy memoir but it wasn't really comedic anything. It was supposed to sort of talk about how he grew up in Britain and then grew up in the United States and what that was like and how he got into comedy, but really it wasn't funny. It wasn't even like a poignant touching memoir. He's super misogynistic and I left this book 
basically deciding that I never want to see him stand up again because I think he's a terrible human. Like it was awful and I hated it. So this was my least favorite book by far. There's like not even any comparison. There are books that are like poorly written, but this book is just offensive. So yeah. Hey guys, I'm Mav from Bookworm Wonders and my least favorite book this year was Shameless, a new adult novel by Lex Martin. I will take responsibility here and admit that I should not have picked up this book because I have disliked previous books by this author, but the blurb made it sound interesting and I have changed my mind about an author's books before, so I decided to give it a try and I ended up having so many regrets. Not only was this one of the most stereotypical representations of a Latina I have ever read in a book, but there were words and sentences in Spanish that straight up made no sense. This seemed to me like a classic attempt by an author to check off diversity of their writing list without really putting more effort than maybe checking Google Translate. Aside from that, this book followed a very generic and boring new adult formula and overall it was really disappointing. Hi, I'm Desels. I do gaming and book stuff occasionally on YouTube. You can find me on YouTube under Desels as well as Twitter and pretty much if you find a Desels there's a good chance it's me. My least favorite book that I've read in 2016, I feel just a little, little bit guilty because Marinez was actually the one who gave it to me as part of a book swap at VidCon last year, and that was Armada by Ernest Cline. It was just not an amazing read. I think it took me six months to actually finish it because it just wasn't holding me engaged, as well as I found some of the descriptions kind of vague and useless if you weren't massively into sci-fi culture because they do things where I felt like character X when event Y happened to them and honestly if you haven't seen movie Z then you're just gonna have no idea what the what the character's on about and that kind of bugged me I mean I got the references but it's not good writing and the story was so predictable so very predictable. Ugh. Hey everyone, I'm Katie from Katie Loves to Read and my least favorite book of 2016 was definitely The Little Communist Who Never Smiled by Lola Lafon. Oh, this book was such a letdown for me. I had such high hopes for it. If you know me, you'll know I'm really big into artistic gymnastics. So when I heard there was a gymnastics book coming out, I knew I had to have it. It's a novelization of the life of Nadia Comaneci. So you would think as a novelization, it should add more to the story, take a few kind of, I don't know, literary choices and kind of flesh the thing out a little bit more beyond what we already know, but this book did not do that. But additionally, it had the worst grammar of any book that I have seen published by like a proper publisher. There were full stops in the middle of words and there were random letters capitalized in the middle of sentences for no reason. The author sometimes used speech marks but sometimes she'd decide not to and it was just really confusing and frustrating. But in addition to all of that, it was also peppered with factual inaccuracies that just kind of showed you that the author really did not do her research. And despite having a beautiful cover, it was not the perfect book that I wanted it to be and that was really disappointing. Hey guys, what is up? My name is Neil Gita and my channel name is Dulce Reads. My least favorite book of the year was We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. This book was very boring, even though it's like a little bit over 200 pages. It's a very short book. I just felt like I was reading it for years. It felt very slow and because of that I felt like the book was 400 pages instead of 200. And also the main character, she's very bland. I don't know anything about her except for the fact that she has a mental illness. That is literally all I know about her. I don't know anything else about her personality. The side characters, there are quite a couple of them. The side characters, I could not distinguish between them. I half the book, even up until the last page, I was like, wait, who is this again? Who is that? Because I just, I could not remember who was who. And the whole selling point of this book is the major plot twist. It's a kind of a very predictable plot twist. And it was just very cheap. I felt like the author could have gone a different direction, but I felt like she chose the easy way out. And yeah, just this book, if you're looking for a bland, boring main character with a bunch of indistinguishable side characters and just a plot that goes nowhere, pick this book up. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Shelby from Stang Books, and my least favorite book for 2016 was The V Unit by Max Voss. This book was one I had chosen for a challenge that I needed to read it for. It was on a couple of my challenge lists. 
So I kept pushing myself to read to it and I actually just read it recently and I was really disappointed in the book. I liked the idea of the premise of vampires and the military and being created specifically to support the US military, but the premise was not lived up to by the writing and the structure of the story. It quickly went downhill. And while I really enjoyed one of our main characters, he gets completely short shifted in the story and goes through some things that should have been incredibly traumatic and he should have really struggled to deal with and the author does not give the character the courtesy of really dealing with those things and just kind of brushes them off as if they didn't happen. And the other problem with this book is it takes erotica to a really bad place. This isn't even supposed to be really an erotica book. It is a romance novel. It is does have the sex scenes in it, but it went places that it just didn't need to go in order to sell the story and really just throwing groups of guys into sexual situations for no apparent reason. It just really took away from the idea of this wonderful plot that could have gone somewhere. There was a great basic premise and it got short cheated by the writing in my opinion. Hi everyone, my name is Betty and my channel name is Betty Reads and my least favorite book of 2016 was Magonia by Maria Devonna Headley. I feel like there was just this complex air about it but the explanation and execution of the book itself was not done as well as it the mysterious aspect that we were supposed to be intrigued about actually went down. I feel like you just went into the story knowing that something is about to happen to the main character but then as she's explaining things you, there's all these terms being used and you don't really know what they're referring to so it's just more confusing so I'm like all right it's a mystery but you're confusing us more by assuming that we know what's going on so it was just very odd. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm from the channel Tea Leaves and Book Bindings. My least favorite book of 2016 is Untamed by A.G. Howard. This is a book of novellas that is part of the Splintered series by A.G. Howard. This is a series I've had many issues with because of abusive behavior that has been present in pretty much every single book and this one only made it worse. I didn't even finish this book because it had some of the most disgusting views on virginity and woman sexuality that I've ever read. Hi, I'm Kayla from Heroic Pages. My least favorite book of 2016 has to be 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl by Mona Awood. This is actually shortlisted for the Skiller Prize here in Canada. I had a really hard time with this book. The chapters are told at different points of time in the main character's life and that character didn't really seem consistent throughout it, dealing with the issues that she was dealing with. Sometimes I question whether it was the, the, the same character as the chapter before. There wasn't really anything of substance really to this book, which is disappointing because I was really looking forward to some of the issues like body image issues that this book was sort of promising to me. I didn't hate it, but I didn't like it. Hi everybody, my name is Rachel Hobson. My channel name is just listed under my name. Rachel Hobson. Today I'm here to talk about my least favorite book of 2016 and I didn't really want to necessarily talk about my least favorite book. It's definitely a book that I was most disappointed with and that book is Brooklyn by Colm Toybin. I had first heard about this book through Books and Quills. She was talking about it because the movie was coming out and she loved it and I was very interested in picking it up. I had enjoyed other things that she had recommended and as someone who is of Irish descent I wanted to read this book. Alice is the protagonist. She's an Irish girl who immigrates to New York City. Brooklyn to be exact. This book was described to me as a coming of age tale. I I couldn't see it and that's why I didn't like this book. I felt like Alice was forced into making decisions that she didn't want to make from the beginning to the end. I really couldn't understand any of her motives and I guess like the overall story was sweet. It was just really unimpressive. The story had a lot of potential which is why I held out to the end. I just it fell flat and I can't say enough how disappointed I was with this book. Hi guys! 
I'm Jelly Jelly Book Fanatic, I'm 18 years old and I am a booktuber from the Netherlands. My least favourite book of 2016 was probably Peter Pan by J.M. Barrie. This is such a well-known classic and I expected a lot more from it from the Disney movies because I absolutely love the Peter Pan Disney movie and I just feel like it gave a completely inaccurate view of this book. I don't feel like it was a good adaptation at all. Like it is child friendly but it's not a real adaptation of what this book is. It is a lot darker than I expected it to be and I did like that part about it but what I didn't like was how J.M. Barry tried to implement magical realism in this. The caretaker of the children is called Nana and Nana is a dog. I honestly wasn't sure what was happening there because Nana actually talks like she's a talking dog. I wasn't really wasn't sure for most of the book what was really happening there. And in my opinion Peter was not dark enough. I've read some retellings of Peter Pan that was so good and if Jan Barry wants to go dark with the story he should have gone really dark and not halfway there. This is Stephanie at Shy Notebooks. The worst book of the year for me was The Crucible. I read it because of a challenge and it was just so bad. Like, it's such an icky time in history and as a woman of faith and as a woman, it just offended me all over the place and it didn't have any like redeemable or interesting qualities to it. So maybe I could pick up a Salem book some other time, but this was not the one. It was just poorly told and poorly characterized. Maybe it's because it's a play, but it just wasn't for me. Hey everyone, I'm Chris from Cozy Vigilante. My least favorite book of 2016 is Merlin's Moon by Annabelle J. The relationship that this book follows does not get developed over the course of the entire relationship. There are three time hops in this book where major plot points happen, like character deaths and some relation development and just things. And it just made things a little bit too confusing and a little too complicated and didn't let you get any type of attachment to the characters. Hi, I'm Julia from Novel Noise. My least favorite book, unfortunately, has to go to My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand. I really wanted to love this book, but I found the writing to be very juvenile. And while I know that I've surpassed the age that young adult writers are writing for, it just felt very unrealistic. The dialogue didn't feel real. It didn't feel like something people would actually be saying in real life. I felt very disconnected connected from the characters and I didn't think that there had any real development. The love story was cute but it wasn't enough to sustain me and it was supposed to be historical fiction but it really was just kind of fiction that just kind of used the places and names of historical figures and instead of really being a story set in that time period in my opinion so it just did I mean it still got three stars but it just it didn't really do it for me. Hello everyone Thomas here from SFF 180 where I mostly discuss adult science fiction and fantasy. Now there are hundreds of new titles that drop every year and inevitably some of them will disappoint. For 2016, sadly, there were two heavily hyped novels from debut writers that failed to pull their weight for me. The first of these is Sylvain Nouvelle's Sleeping Giants, all about the discovery of a 6,000 year old massive battle robot like a transformer whose parts are dug up all around the world. Now, I'm not exactly sure why anyone would write a book about a giant battle robot in which nothing happens, but that's more or less what we have here. It's like watching a Godzilla movie where the big guy just sits on a rock and scratches his butt all day. Couple that with underwritten characters and the dubious choice of writing most of the novel in the form of interview transcripts, and uh, I have my big letdown book of 2016 all wrapped up in a bow. Maybe we'll finally get to the good parts in the sequel. Also, the last one about a young woman contestant in a wilderness survival reality show who's unaware that while she's been taping the show, the entire outside world has fallen to a massive plague, like the one in Stephen King's The Stand, has basically two stories going on at once, and sadly, the bad one overpowers the good one. Our protagonist is more or less forced by the needs of the plot to behave like an utter idiot throughout the book. It isn't that she's just clueless, it's that she comes across as completely divorced from reality, and sadly, this seems to be the only way author Alexandra Oliva could think of to make her story go the way she wanted. Now, I never want to dislike a book, but when something disappoints me, it's my duty as a reviewer to be honest in my opinion. For these authors, I can only say, better luck next time. Hey guys, it's Kirsty from Melbourne on my mind. I actually was going to list Eclipse as my least favorite book of the year, and then I went through all the books that I read this year and I was like, oh, oh no, 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 I hated this book so much more than I hated Eclipse. So that should tell you something about how much I hated this book. And that book 
is Captive Prince by C.S. Picat. And apparently, I am super in the corner of unpopular opinions on this one because, like, everybody else gave this thing five stars and I'm like, I'm sorry, what the fuck book did you read because it's hella not the book that I read. What I had a problem with in this book is the amount of rape in it. Like, one of the male characters, the one from the heteronormative society, he ends up as a sex slave in the homonormative society, and he is basically sexually assaulted time and time again. He is given unwanted oral sex, which in my book is rape, but people are like, well, it doesn't involve penetration, so like, it's not rape. No, no, still rape. And as well as that, rape is used as entertainment by the nobility in the society. Like, their version of entertainment is to put two slaves into a ring and whoever rapes the other one is declared the winner. And then like when one slave does rape the other, the rape victim is considered to be enjoying it because he has an orgasm. And I'm like, oh my God, no, no, this is not how this works. And meanwhile, all the nobility sit around and jerk off. There are also pedophilic relationships involved and just nope, 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 not okay with anything that happened in that book. I have not read the remaining two books in the trilogy. I do not plan to read the remaining two books in the trilogy. I don't care how super shippy and adorable the relationship gets between the two main characters. Don't care. It's a book that is based 900% on rape. Not okay with it. Hey guys, I'm V from Om Beery. So my least favorite book of this year that I read is technically a DNF book, but I just, it, I really didn't like this book and there was no way I was going to end up liking this book. And that is Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. And I know I'm going to probably get a lot of comments like, it's the most boring book in the series, just push through it. But Honestly, I don't want to push through it. I did not care about the characters except like one who every time their chapter came up that's all I wanted to read and I like skipped through so many other people's chapters just to get to this one character's point of view. And also I just I did not care like there is no further explanation that I did not care and I feel like I don't care what goes on in the rest of the series. I mean, there's other reasons why Sarah J Maas's books have become problematic, but we don't need to talk about that. Um, if you know, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this book, nah, not my faves. Definitely least faves this year. Sorry. Hi, I'm Mason at The Amazing Bookshelf here on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram. My least favorite book of 2016 was Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. I spent the entire summer rereading the series in preparation. I wanted to see what was going on after leaving the series alone for a while and I really love Queen of Shadows and I do not know what what changed between the two of these. Maybe it was all the ways that the men did male things. They had a male smile and made a male promise. Maybe it was the fact that Selena and Rowan had sex on a beach and she caught on fire. <laughs> Maybe it was the way everyone growled or purred or loosed a breath. This book was just so bad, so poorly written. No one's the same that they were in the previous books. Like, even Queen of Shadows, there's just such a drastic change between the characters and their motivations and what they do. And Selena's so entitled to everything. My god, she's like the worst character I've ever read. <laughs> it's so, it was so bad. My least favorite read in 2016 was A Court in Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. I'll be honest and say that this was almost edged out by Eclipse by Stephanie Meyer. It's difficult to say why exactly, but when comparing the two in my feelings, I just hate this one that much more. I think it's because this was the most relevant one this year and people kept talking about it. Every time someone brought it up in a positive light, it was almost like my hatred of it was also brought up. At the end of the day, this book was poorly written. I cannot even process or comprehend the idea that an editor saw this at all or even took a, like a cursory glance at anything that was within this book. Mass beats readers over the head with her writing. It's a story with absolutely no grace, no style. She perpetuates harmful stereotypes and romanticizes abusive relationships and alpha males. And none of this has good or decent or even cohesive writing to fall back on. Every moment I spent reading this was painful, even when I was skim reading it halfway to page 600 or whatever it was. And 
I'll just end by saying that about 400 of these 600 pages were absolutely useless. Thank you so much to everybody who participated. It was a blast to have all of you and all of their channels will be linked down in the description. Tune in next time as we all talk about our favorites. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon.